This is the food packet of salt individual. It's a lightweight, portable, and easy to eat in a pretty quick period of time little food packet. Providing about eight or 900 calories to an individual soldier during the first few days of airborne or amphibious assault or on patrol or sentry type scenarios. This thing was produced from 1948 to 1956. There were eight menus, 24 to a case. It was also used as a supplemental snack to the ration combat individual. This is the ration combat individual, the final generation of the 24 hour sea ration, and the more common thing eaten out in the front lines opposed to that food packed individual salt. But this thing is heavy and bulky, and on those initial amphibious or airborne landings, this might be a bit too much. The very last of its kind, December 1958, final production run out of Natural Storage Company Incorporated. Beautiful. Six come to a case, and a case weighs 38 pounds. I'm going to snip the wire from the back. And you could untwist it. That's not fun. Let's look at this. It was written on the side. Artillery coordinates for infantry to base command. Heck, this could have been a ration once it was set to limited standard after this final production run. And during production of the meal combat individual during 59, 1960. Well, thing is, something like this could have been getting used for like between three to six years after at least. Maybe even 10. All right, let's give it a look. Wow. Before we open this, one more thing. Notice. This product's been held under controlled temperature and humidity conditions and should not be considered overage because of date of pack. Further refrigeration is not required. That means this is gonna be perfectly fine. I think it's going to be a tough deal. We'll see. Crunchy for sure. It smells like frogs and crawfish. Ooh, look at this. Mmm. Mmm, mmm, oh. Oh man, what is that? Did bugs get in this? No way. Look at that. Ooh. Alright, the bottom layer almost looks a little bit better. It really does. insect is that? It's alive. In there. Some red bug. No critter. Alright. They smell so good. Boy, that one's got a little weight considering how Pretty gnarly it is in visuals and falling apart and even seems like it might have some bug damage. It's beautiful too because this is in, these are in boxes. It's not a la carte anymore like World War II or that E-ration.
These are in their own boxes. So when it's dark out, raining, or if you're getting shot at, you can grab these out of your case and actually know you got a full day's food and not like whatever it is you're gonna end up with when you are grabbing them out of a case like that. I mean, that right there, it's cool and like, ooh, you know, one can at a time, but man, you don't even know what you're grabbing. Are they B units? Are they M units? You know, the meat and beans or whatever it is, beef stew. And of course, there's the K ration of World War II. And yeah, these are in individual boxes. They were super handy and ahead of their time. Like, seriously, five years ahead of its time in, in that regard. In, an actual meal that is in its own box with toilet paper and matches. Nothing like that was ever even made before. And the fact that this uses barely any metal. A little four ounce can and a key. It's made out of metal to open it, that's all. You know, these things were actually more expensive to produce than these. The sea rations. These, even though they used a lot of metal and were bulky, a little bit more food too. Field ration D, just cardboard and cellophane with some cheap chocolate oat flour, raw oat flour added so it doesn't melt as easily and it's a little more sustaining. And this derives from the U.S. Army emergency ration of World War I and pre-World War I. This thing was too bulky and difficult to produce and pretty much over-engineered. It was way too much of an emergency ration. You really, like, didn't need that much to replace, like, really nothing more than a missed meal on average before you'd get a C ration. But these are too bulky and they use too much metal. And that's when these came in, and they're boxed, and quick and easy to eat and pack away, because the way they're shaped, you can put them in your cargo pocket, they're super handy, and they're using less metal. That's like the huge thing. And you got cigarettes and matches and, you know, toilet paper in there. That's the origin of this. The ration combat individual. This was your standard combat ration used by soldiers, individual soldiers when no hot meals were available in the front lines. It's a full day's food that has 3,600 calories, but it's heavy, it's bulky. This thing weighs six and a half pounds, and a lot of times it'd get opened up and pilfered. The fruit, bread, or B units and cigarettes. Parts of the ration getting eaten and other stuff set aside out of menu fatigue. The food packet of salt was pretty much just a lightweight snack. On the go snack containing eight or 900 calories and it weighs a pound. Here's the accessory packet. I think it's pretty extensive. Cigarettes, matches, Toilet paper, candy, chewing gum, coffee, sugar, can opener, water purification tablets. You even got your spoon in there. Into the bottom layer. Not bad. I wonder what this was. What did that say? Gosh, I can't really read that. I think it was hamburgers. Pretty sure. Menu 5. I'll open it from the bottom. Look at that. That's not too bad. Do we have a year on this? July 1955. You really will see like 50 K rations for every one of these. This thing is so uncommon. It's seriously one of the neatest little rations. It's pretty much like a K ration. It's so similar. It's more metal than a K ration. Built a lot tougher you know this is a bilaminated package like a metal and craft paper like a foil and craft paper and so it could be just two layers but still Oh, that's actually the spoon. Beautiful. That is just a perfect clear spoon. Nice and tough too, I'll tell you. And then the TP. 
which looks pretty good. A little bit brown. That's not cool. Oh, sorry. Oh, let's smell this. Whoa, that's like, it totally smells like, huh. That just really does have the smell of an old room. Just an old room with an old desk and paper, like a library with old, old books and aged paper, you know? It's just a beautiful, fresh aged paper smell. Like paper and grain. Just grab an old book and you open it up and, and bury your nose in there and you know when the paper's kind of yellow, that's what this smells like. It's awesome. It's like really nostalgic and comforting. Granulated sugar, six grams net, packed by Van Brood Milling Company out of Clinton, Massachusetts. Nice bag. A cellophane bag that's, oh, sorry, pretty tough. And you know, what's great about this thing, it's going to keep your cigarettes and anything you opened up nice and dry when you're on an amphibious assault. Or like, if it's raining out, you just para dropped down, you know, you parachuted down and you're on the ground and it's some like really crazy windy rain and you open up a food packet under a tree and, or maybe in a foxhole it's wet and you don't want your toilet paper to get wet and you, you just start throwing it in here after you open this up. Oh, this smells amazing. There's a slight perfume smell, like perfume, old oak newspaper and whoa nice call for philip morris i haven't seen these in a while america's finest cigarette pure soluble coffee it's maybe a little bit hardened up is there going to be just one or are there two there are two and they're both hardened up that's okay Assorted sherbets, delicious candy, and it's not liquefied. Do you have any idea, like, how how crazy that is? How absolutely insane it is that stuff like this is still around. Sh look at the golden letters: sugar, corn syrup, citric acid, true and artificial flavor, certified color. Look at that beech nut spearmint beaches. I'm telling you, and that old gum, the old shickle, you can't beat it. These matches are uh, designed especially for damp climates, but they will not light when wet or after long exposure, several weeks, to very damp air. Now there's the P38, just unraveled out of its wrapper. Those wrappers, the glue doesn't hold another Van Brode sugar. JW Speaker. Nice. Look at that. 1951 patent number. JW Speakers are really good. Always tough and kind of hard to open. Just a tiny bit heavier than a K ration. Not bad. All right, let's get the sound of a tray. Nice. Okay, let's first start off by checking out some coffee. I don't know, we'll see what this is looking like. Man, hardened up. Looks like this one kind of leaked. Oh man, I don't like the looks of it. I really don't. <laughs> it's pretty shot. I like, rarely ever do this. Let's see what I can do. Well, you know, good old pure soluble coffee. That is the same thing as coffee instant. It's not soluble coffee blend or anything like that. So, coffee instant. From like, maybe five years newer. No deal. It's actually so common. I'm just gonna tear it. Oh yeah, stunt coffee. When in doubt, Gotta have coffee. I mean, 
I rarely bring in a outside component, but in that case, it is perfectly acceptable. You know what? This right here is really hard for me to, like, it's difficult to bring myself to open this. I can't. I can't do it. Oh, good thing they didn't fly in the coffee. Whoa. Okay. Car Consolidated Biscuit Company. Chicago, Illinois. JB Carr. Little hiss. Not bad. Give, give, oh, wait. Yeah, that doesn't look good. Gosh. I might have to open the other one for some snacks. This doesn't look too swift. Is that just chocolate on the inside or is that like rust and stuff? It could just be like, hmm, whoa, yeah, it's just chocolate. This is gonna be fine. It smells nice. That's just like an inviting milk chocolate. I was wondering if it was rust or chocolate. There's like no moisture content to this cookie. It's incredible. This thing was totally built to last like forever. Oh my gosh. Look at that. That is a chocolate chip cookie. And it smells very inviting. It is Check that out. The three crackers. <laughs> Salted crackers. Look at that cookie. There's like nothing wrong with it. Visually, a little bit of salt. It just smells like it's picked up, you know, an odor of like um, an enriched bleached wheat flour and like the baked crackers. I mean, that's what it smells like. It smells like it picked up smell of that and like an, an, a scent of these. And exactly. Yeah. And these are just both are dusted. My guess just totally dusted up like the brim with BHA and BHT preservatives or like antioxidants. that will keep the fats from going rancid. Let's check out the assorted sherbets. That coffee's still hot, still steaming. Instead of pulling this, oh man, I wanna pull that. It actually looks like more fun. Maybe I should just peel it here. And then, see what I can do from there. Oh, man, it just had to happen, didn't it? All right, no big deal. Okay, that didn't really work. Jeez, what's happening? Oh, okay. All right, we'll just pull this. Oh. That didn't work out too well. All right. Oh, sherbets. They have... Do they have any original color left? I wonder. Foil. Then like a parchment paper. It probably stuck to it like something serious, but man, it still has some color. Ooh, it smells like some paper and cardboard. Man, it doesn't look too great. Uh, what did I expect? And again, this is pretty cool actually. I mean, really. Oh. That's not so bad. There's like lime and orange and there's nothing really wrong with it. It's just oxidized food coloring and, you know, just slightly breaking down, like potentially absorbed a little bit of moisture. Yeah, I'm going to drink a little coffee. Nice and smooth. Can't go wrong with that old school spray dried. And by this point, really, like when it was 
pure soluble coffee as the agglomeration process was changed and you know this coffee was treated with dextrins you know a 50 50 split on the actual composition for the longest time uh, otherwise it just wouldn't mix right the coffee molecule the spray dried molecule was too small and they had to get mixed with something and then the process of it these spray dried molecules there was no need after the process like rendered them a larger granule they no longer were too dense and packed and like it would never mix right like by itself no longer needed the like dextrins to mix this is pretty cool I mean, I'm telling you, you can practically smell like some kind of preservative, and it's also like very canned smelling. There's a metallic smell to it for sure, and it's not bad. It's totally normal. I'm sure it smelled very canned, like within a year or less after getting canned. What the heck is that on the top? <laughs> this cookie. Ooh. I felt like it almost broke out of my hand. Man. No, like, bad odors. Like, nothing unusual. It's just, it's such a low moisture content. That's, that's in its favor right there. It's like a chocolate chip oatmeal cookie. <laughs> the amount of salt. Dude, I would buy cookies like this. It's like, it's salty. It's a sweet and salty chocolate chip cookie. Here, hold on. Look at it. Coffee's perfect drinking temperature. My apologies for not using the dried out coffee. It's not fully authentic. It was an outside component, but I needed coffee that was reliable, you know? It's so dry that it immediately absorbs coffee and it dunks really well. That was an awesome cookie. What a great recipe and design. Canning design and everything. I mean, that's awesome. I mean, like, chocolate chip cookie. I'm shaking. It's a super dry and kind of buttery. I mean, there's quite a bit of shortening. Excellent oatmeal crunch and little bits of oatmeal residual. That was awesome. It would have been great if they'd thrown in two cookies, two crackers. The chocolate chips are really dry. They're like totally desiccated chocolate chips. I think they always were very low moisture content with oatmeal. It was really delicious oatmeal. Little bits in there and then like margarine and then a ton of BHA, BHT preservative to keep it from going rancid. bit of a malted barley to the cracker. There's a 
malt, malt flavor. And the salt is amazing. It's a real salty cracker. And I mean, you'd be eating it with your main, I'm sure, but not this one. There will never be another food pack of salt main that's ever edible, that's for sure. But the bee in it still being edible like that is pretty amazing. It's the low moisture content. It's not like there's a canned jam or anything else in there, you know, so like, it's still fine. There's nothing that can go wrong with that. I'll bet you in a hundred years there'll still be a few of these still edible. Who knows? I'll find them first. This is pretty good. Hmm. Beautifully baked cracker. It's just so love and moisture content. Nice little charred bit at the corner. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. Should I save this? I should save this one for display. I don't think I have any open one of these, you know. I'm mean, like, what do I, I gonna have a cookie for display too? I mean, eh. So neat. <laughs> really, not this thing. Oh, let's see if this one's any good. It's about as good as it's gonna get. I'm just gonna eat the one, maybe two of them. Oh, that's a strong flavor. Like a strong cherry. Interesting chew. It's not that bad. Granular chew from the breakdown. Outrageous old root candy. It has really, it's aged. We'll call it that. I don't know. Maybe I won't eat much more of that. I don't know. I think I need a smoke to really build up the courage to open up that old can of rusted out mysterious meat. Look at that. Johnny Philip Morris or Johnny Roventini. Made in the USA by Philip Morris and Company, LTD Incorporated. Established over a hundred years. Made from a blend of the world's finest tobaccos. These always turn up in those 1950s rations. Never, never seen them in the 60s. Alright. A light smell of cedar. Guest package, not for sale, sample. <laughs> That's so nice. M and C. Philip Morris Limited Special Blend. <laughs> Beautiful. Oh yeah. This is... Like, near perfect. These, they have no damage. They're a little bit dry, I can tell. Like, from, from the squeeze of them, they're a little dry. That is it. These are good cigarettes. I, I can tell right now from the smell. No ammonia, no, like, rotten old roses and ammonia. Nothing like that. Not, like, you know, geraniums that are snapped, like the flowers, and has that peppery, like, you know, those red flowers, and the chlorophyll and, like, pepper smell. None of that. It is, like, honey and cedar with a very mild tobacco. Like, a very mild, yes. It's like this. I'm running into some 
pretty gnarly rationed cigarettes recently, so like this is pretty cool. I mean like, it's one of those things where it's kind of luck of the draw. And I, I've gotten pretty lucky with this stuff in the past. I mean, I really have. Especially, and ironically enough, with lucky strikes, because I've come across some luckies lately that weren't too great. I'm telling you. I'm just telling you. Let's see if I can do this. Ooh. All that for nothing. Ooh. Oh. Here. Ooh. That was cool. Oh, man. Didn't do the dry pull. Like a firm pole. It was like no. Oh, that is flavor. There was no no flavor on the dry pole. Ooh, sorry. Hmm. You want to inhale it right away. You want to get the flavor. There's like a palate acquisition to like this whole thing. You can't just go in like with a big old heavy drag on that first one. The rest of the cigarette won't, like you won't pick up the fine flavors. And you need to get that. Filtered there, it's smooth, a little bit dry, it's running a little fast. Running a little fast, but I gotta say, for the flavor, that's smooth and of excellent quality. It's lightly sweet and has like a nice. mild tobacco flavor. It's not overpowering and that is great. Smooth and satisfying. Take the edge off, that's for sure. This is pre-LRP. That's what the food packet of salt is. Food packet long range patrol. That's what food packet of salt kind of turns into. But then the LRP it's not like quick and easy to eat like this thing is. In a lot of ways, this thing was more efficient. It's too bad they couldn't keep it around, but I guess between it and, you know, well, between the MCI and the LRP, this thing wasn't really needed anymore. And really, it was taken out of service before the LRP was ever even realized. It's so smooth and like it's a wonderful cigarette. Well, old Philip Morris, that bellboy, the living trademark, Johnny Philip Morris, for 40 years. He wasn't even a kid, he looked like a kid. He was just a little guy. He was just a little dude, and man, he had some pretty good work off that, I gotta say. He really did. He had a great job. For 40 years, a sealed job, living trademarked. A nice B flat coming off a little dude. There was something not threat, like a non threatening mascot to it. It's funny, you'd never see anything like that these days. Never would see a kid with cigarettes, or what's supposed to be a kid, like a bellboy. But he wasn't a kid, so I guess, I don't know. So there were eight menus, three of each, 24 to a case for this thing. And 
you know, again, it's pre-LRP. Thicker and easier to eat. I think this thing was fascinating and efficient. I mean, it's like before the MCI, and it looks so much like one, but it really isn't. It's not anything like an MCI, pretty much, because it's not a full balanced meal. It's a snack with a really cool accessory pack. I mean, the sherbets, love the label. I'm gonna save that. The old gum, the peaches. You wanna know what the best piece of chewing gum you'll ever have is? is some Wrigley's uh, spearmint candy coated chewing gum from the mid 30s. Candy coated chewing gum from the mid 30s. What is it? It's flavorful. Mm. Gets the saliva glands just going. I refilled the coffee. <laughs> I, I, I ch chugged that last sip of coffee instant and then just got myself some coffee instant. A dude from Sesquicheton or Ses... Ses somewhere from Canada. Anyway. Oh, for Philip Morris. That guy ended up passing away in 1998. He was born in 1910. Old Johnny Philip Morris. So he lived a pretty fulfilling life, I would say. And he'll live on in the old artwork and advertisements and whatnot, and it's pretty neat. Snack ready to eat, that's what this is. I mean, really. Love the food pack of salt. Totally a K ration of the 50s. I mean, that's all it is. It's just an awesome two and a half times menu variation K ration. <sighs> I think I'm good on that. Alright, let's check out that meat real quick. Just because the metal's thin, I'm gonna wear some gloves. Don't need a mask, really, you know, that's like overkill, but I mean, sometimes I get kind of over the top and I'll wear a mask and gloves and suit up and everything just to open a box, but other times I, I won't. It just depends on how I'm feeling and let's give this a look. Ooh, this is like a really satisfying crunch. Oh yeah, you see, just in case, because it's a little flimsy. You know, flimsy, old, rusted metal. Ooh, that just like, you could just glide it across almost. It's so weak and thin. Was pretty good actually. I mean it's just it's just a friendly little food fossil. Like what was that back then? Wish I knew what it was. That's almost like a K ration portion. This is still a little bit more actual meat, you know, protein from farm animal or egg or something, which that's almost what that looks like. Jeez, that thing's pretty solid. This is like rocks, that is like a rock. I feel like I'm drilling to the center of earth. That is just petrified food. Like a rust rock. That is awesome. What was it? It's so mysterious. It could be spiced beef. Look at that. That's like 
all meat right there like a strip of meat here strip of a little chunk of meat there there and there i think that's spiced beef i'm almost certain of it might just save that put it in a drawer or something i mean i guess just kind of put it in like a junk drawer and just put old meat you know on the label all right let's check out those beachies beach nut packaging company Manufacture, main offices, Canada, Harry, New York. Made of gum based sugar, corn syrup, starch, flavor, and softeners. Nice. So incredible. I'm curious if the gum base, by this point, like how much chickle, real chickle is in it. I can literally bite right in my front teeth. It's incredibly sweet. With a very mild spearmint flavor. The actual spearmint is quite mild. A really nice palate cleanser, but I'd almost like a bit more spearmint. Wrigley's from the mid-30s, they would use fresh pressed spearmint leaf juice no joke and it was like real pure chickle dark this gosh it barely even looks like any real chickle is in it maybe just a little bit by this point it has just some darkness but it's held together so well too my old chickle will turn the brittle if it doesn't have like softeners and stabilizers added and by the 50s a lot of that stuff really didn't have the chickle. I was like, I guess they didn't, they couldn't hire enough chickleros, the uh, chickle farmers to sap out enough of that stuff to supply the demand. So there was a, at least with beech nut, a obvious lower amount of actual chickle. I'm telling you, I'll show you soon. It still tastes great, but I mean, actually I can't even complain. It's so fresh. It's just, hmm. Yeah, there's really not a lot of spearmint. Seems like there's a lot of softener. It's a really nice, soft chew. Not a lot of actual real chickle anymore. Still a really nice piece of, like, natural vintage gum that's perfectly chewable. Nice little introduction with the new camera. We'll see how it goes. Hopefully it worked out. So this is food packed assault. These things are a rare treat. Pretty much what turns into the MCI and LRP. I mean... This has features of both, being close to a single meal, but just not quite fully balanced nutritionally. So you can't say it's a full meal, nor can its purpose be directed to fulfilling for a full day's worth of balanced meals. Because the soldier may be in such like serious combat or whatever it is that they don't have the time to sit and have a full meal. They got enough time to maybe eat two or three of these in a day, and for like the first few days before there needs to be some like better food, hot meals or maybe some RCIs, fuller rations to fulfill the nutritional needs that are going to be happening within three days, a max of 10 before you get any real like serious issues. For something that needs to be light and not making a bunch of noise, this is not 100% with those cans. You can sock them up. Not bad. Well, anyway, this is Steve1989. I hope you liked the video. And I'll be coming back at you with something new. Or old. Alright, cool. See ya.